Hi there, this is Solid Sharon, Solid Sharon in Films and welcome to another video. Um, today I would like to do something slightly different. It's just about TV rather than film. Um, and it's about David Simon and the most underappreciated great TV show. So before David Simon did Trem and Generation Kill and before he did The Corner and before he did The Wire which might be the greatest TV show of all time um, this is the big fat Blu-ray of all five seasons he spent some time in the Baltimore police service following detectives around and he wrote a book simply called Homicide which is an absolutely fantastic book and that led him to make a TV show called Homicide Life in the Street. Now in the early 90s, probably the most popular cop show was NYPD Blue. Um, Homicide was around the same time. But certainly in the UK, it was shown in Channel 4. But they always showed it like at the back of 11 o'clock at night. And they would move the day that it was shown. They would move the hour. Sometimes it was on at 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, I remember trying to set the video recorder when we had video recorders um, to record episodes um, they showed seasons out of order they missed episodes so it was quite hard to actually see but a few years ago these box sets came out these are the region 1 DVDs because as far as I know, it's not available in Blu-ray. Please let me know if I'm wrong. Um, so this is season one and two. This is season three. Which is a six disc. This is season four. And another six disc box. This is season five, which is another six box, six disc, sorry. This is season six, which is six discs. This is season seven, another six discs. And this is the TV movie. So it's kind of film related because it was a TV movie, um, simply called Homicide the Movie. And the thing that set this series apart, apart from um, how good of a show it was in general, was the fact that it was probably the most realistic depiction of a homicide unit. Because David Simon, who is one of the greatest writers in television history, um, obviously spent years um, on the job following these guys around. Um, so the realism, obviously in those days there was no HBO, so there's no profanity in the programmes, which might be a little bit um, odd, but you don't actually care. Um, the thing that Homicide Life in the Street did 
that not a lot of cop shows did was show a bunch of detectives that don't always get on. They kind of fight and they bicker and a lot of them don't get on. But when they have to do the job, they do the job. Plus, there's a lot of episodes that don't have a resolution. You know, nothing is neatly tied in a bow at the end of each 45 minute episode a lot of the time. Um, There have threads of stories going through several episodes. It kind of expects you to have watched, you know, all the way through. But still, each episode stands on its own. And yes, that has now become obviously the standard thing. And, you know, there's so many cop shows now. But if you go back and watch Homicide, it just stands up so well. Um, These were made... 92... I can't actually get a date for them. Um, but it's just fantastic. Um, it stars Yafit Koto as G, the sergeant, who runs the unit. He runs it with an iron fist, but also with a wonderfully dry sense of humour. Um, there's a female sergeant, or who becomes a sergeant, Melissa Leo, who would go on to star um, in several films, Three Burials of Miguel Estrada and um, Frozen River. Andre Brauer as Frank Pembleton, who's just super cool, one of the detectives, who obviously is now yucking it up in Brooklyn Nine-Nine. But Homicide is where you want to see him. Um, He does go through somewhat of a change. And something happens to him and it is quite shocking when it happens. Um, It's right up where... It's right up there with that um, moment in The Wire with Omar... If you've seen The Wire, you know what I'm talking about. Um, You obviously have the younger detective, Bayliss, who learns from Frank and they fight and they bicker. Um, One of the Baldwins is in it. Ned Beatty's in it. Um, It's just a brilliant cast. It's brilliantly acted. There's so many brilliant um, episodes there's an episode in um, season 2 with Robin Williams who stars um, as a husband of a woman who's shot and killed when they're on holiday in Baltimore and he just gives a fantastic performance as somebody who's trying to you know, get justice and there's moments where you know, the detectives are laughing and he walks in on them and it's just it's so authentic yes, it gets a little bit silly in the seventh season as most shows do even great shows sometimes tend to run a little bit longer than they ought to Um, but then in the movie, it all kind of is tied up and the movie does the whole season, the whole series, justice. Um, but the main thing about homicide, life in the street, it kind of shows that there's no black and white. It's all just grey. Um, there's great episodes about weighing up, you know, the morality. There's an episode about a doctor who doesn't give all of her care 
her attention um, to a gang member and he dies and then they have to you know Bayless and Pemberton are on that case and she pretty much has to be arrested for killing him essentially because she didn't give him enough care and you can see there's a scene in the car where Bayless is struggling with arresting her um, because obviously she saved so many lives but she just didn't in this case so it's like does the life of a gangbanger equate to a doctor's career you know it's stuff that nowadays um, you know obviously cop shows have kind of matured and now every cop show has kind of the moral dilemmas or the good ones do um, but at the time Homicide Life in the Street and NYPD Blue were a bit grittier and were the kind of first ones to kind of show that everything doesn't work out um, but for me Homicide Life in the Street is better than NYT, NYPD Blue even um, it's just so beautifully acted beautifully written it's funny, it's sad, it's tragic, um, and yes, you know, David Simon would go on and do The Wire, which um, is obviously slightly better than Homicide, but Homicide Life in the Street is still an absolute, you know, it's some piece of work. Um, I mean, for me, as far as TV works, you've kind of got Decalogue and The Wire, and then you've got Homicide Life in the Street. Um, you can you can dip in and out of episodes, um, but obviously, watching the whole arc, following characters, careers because they are pretty much like a family they bicker and they fall out with each other and they complain um, but at the end of the day you know, they come together to do their job um, there's great villains in it um, I think anybody who's seen um, Homicide Life in the Street will know the name of Luther Mahoney um, who was later turn up as um, a pathologist in The Wire and the first time you see him in The Wire it's actually quite off-putting because you just go, that's Luther Mahoney, <laughs> don't trust him. Um, so there's great baddies but again, like in The Wire, they're well written, they're not cartoonish. Um, it is essentially shot like a documentary, it's it is kind of there's lots of handheld. Um, it does feel as though you are in that squad room, so it's not as flashy or polished as NYPD Blue, but I think that gives it its authenticity um, and its reality because um, it is homicide life in the street. Um, a perfect example is one of the big early storylines, which is also um, in David Simon's book, is the murder of like an eight-year-old girl, which, um, spoilers, is never actually solved. It's kind of Detective Bayless's first big case, his first red ball. Um, and it's never solved so even when you get to the third season and the fourth season and the fifth season there's still a mention of it and again people who have watched the series will know the name of Dina Watson um, and Bela still like keeps a photo of her in his drawer to kind of remind him um, and they actually won an Emmy for the episode in which Bayless and Pembleton 
um, interview a suspect from the Dina Watson murder. Um, and that's all the episode is. It's three guys in a room. Or I think the title was Three Men and a Dina. Or something similar. Um, and it's literally just three actors in the box, which is the interrogation room. And it's just so well written and so well done. It's absolutely riveting. And you can only have that when you have great acting and great writing to have 45 minutes of three men in a room. Um, the inter- this classic in- in- interrogation scenes. I can't even say the word. I'm so excited. I'm going to have to go back and watch all seven seasons now. Even I want to watch it again. Um, for about the fourth time through. Some of the interrogations are fantastic. Some of them are funny. Some of them are tragic. Um, you know, you'll root for people. You'll feel bad for other people. So this is kind of the template for what The Wire would become as far as, you know, in The Wire you root for people that conventionally you're told by society not to root for. You know, I don't know about you, but many of my favourite characters in The Wire are criminals. They're Omar, they are Slim, they are... You know, obviously Stringer Bell was very popular, whereas because they have, there's still a code even amongst gangsters and drug dealers, there's kind of a code, there's things that they won't do, whereas the mayor, politicians, people in the police force, you know, they'll stoop to nothing pretty much to further their career or whatever. So Homicide was kind of the first as far as I'm concerned, show to kind of have that, that not all good, you know, not all good guys are good and not all bad guys are bad. Um, there's more grey in Homicide Life in the Street. It's pretty much all grey. Um, there's no kind of happy resolutions. There's no, you know, not every case gets solved. You know, they have the wonderful visual aid of the board and it's the murders go up in red and once they're solved they turn black so there's an easy way to see you know which detectives are struggling Um, and Yafit Koto just goes up to the board and has a look at it and everybody knows um, they're in trouble if they've got too much red Um, I mean I am warbling endlessly and not very focused and I'm repeating myself Um, but it's such a great show and I do think it's just been forgotten about um, and underappreciated again it doesn't have a blu-ray release as far as I'm concerned as far as I know Um, but it should have it should have um, much better exposure because I think NYPD Blue was kind of more popular but I think it was more popular because it was kind of more formulaic when I was homicide life in the street was the first well for me the first kind of cop show that was different as far as its realism um, and it's far off, as far as you're not gonna get a nice oh there's a murder and here's the murderer and you know the cops do a great job and everything's everything's back to normal you know Homicide Life in the Street doesn't do that. It's not, it's not neat and tidy. It's, it's messy and horrible. Strangely enough, and that's, um, what murder is. So I apologise for the random, rambling nature of that. Um, I just thought I would have a wee chat about one of my favourite TV shows of all time, and a TV show that deserves more exposure. And that's what I'm here for. Some films that deserve a bit more exposure. Um, So thank you very much for watching. Hopefully the audio and video for this video will be in sync. Because I know the last couple haven't been. I think I've had gremlins. I apologise for that. Um, Thanks for watching. 
and hopefully I'll have a more focused video the next time. Cheerio!